Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing COPD. Okay, so we've now discussed the pathogenesis of the two components of COPD, namely emphysema and chronic bronchitis, and we've seen where the major symptoms of COPD are going to come from. And I'll remind you that the major symptoms of COPD are that you have a productive cough, you are feeling short of breath, uh, you have a higher than normal respiratory rate, you have to breathe laboriously using the accessory muscles of ventilation, and also that you will have a wheeze due to the narrowing of the airways as part of the chronic bronchitis process. Okay, uh, so what I now want to talk about is acute exacerbations of COPD, which are a major reason that people with COPD can end up coming into hospital and also uh, the treatment of COPD. How can we uh, treat this condition? So let's go over here and uh, discuss that. And I think actually I'll take it right the way over there and get a fresh uh, page. So I'll just put the title. We're now going to discuss it acute, which means short-term exacerbations, which means getting worse of the symptoms of COPD, so acute exacerbations of COPD. So quite simply, what this means is that all of a sudden, the symptoms of COPD, the five symptoms that I've been through, so uh, the productive cough because of the overproduction of mucus, the shortness of breath, the tachynea, the dyspnea, and the wheeze, all of those are going to get worse. So I'll put this here, symptoms get worse all of a sudden. And this can be really scary for the person who is suffering with COPD because the breathlessness can get so bad that they're actually feeling as though they're drowning. So, you know, if you've ever um, dived down in a swimming pool and gone a little bit deeper than you went before and then you're having that sort of panic as you uh, try to get back up to the surface in time to breathe again. Uh, it's that sort of feeling, that feeling of panic that you're not getting enough air uh, into your blood to um, go to your tissues. So it can feel so bad that you feel as though you're drowning and therefore it can get people in a real panic. So it's not nice at all. So the symptoms of COPD get worse and this is why people end up going into hospital because they feel as though they can't breathe and that they're drowning uh, and that's why they will present to hospital. Okay right, uh, so all of those symptoms of COPD are going to get worse. So what causes an acute exacerbation of COPD? So usually the cause of an acute exacerbation of COPD, and this isn't always the cause of an acute exacerbation of COPD, but usually it's due to infection. So the thing that causes this that causes the symptoms of COPD to get worse and causes an acute exacerbation of COPD, therefore, because these two things are effectively equal, is usually infection. And about half of the cases will be infection with a bacterium, and about half of cases will be viral infection. So it could be either a bacterial infection or a viral infection. And this is going to be an infection in the chest. So I should just actually put that uh, out missed out on the key words there, a chest infection is going to make um, the symptoms of COPD get worse. And it could be due to bacterial cause or it could be due to viral cause. So let me now give you the names of some bacteria that could cause an acute exacerbation of COPD. So two big ones to know the names of are streptococcus pneumoniae, also called pneumococcus, which is commonly the cause of community-acquired pneumonia. So streptococcus pneumoniae, and also Haemophilus influenzae is also a really important one to know about. Haemophilus influenzae. Now, do not be fooled into thinking that this bacterium, Haemophilus influenzae, is the cause of influenza. It's not. It's not the cause of flu. Um, flu is caused by the influenza virus, which I'm about to add on as one of the viral causes of a chest infection that could lead to an acute exacerbation of COPD. Initially, when they discovered this bacterium, Haemophilus influenzae, they thought that potentially it could have been the cause of flu, uh, and that's why they named it Haemophilus influenzae. But it turns out that it's not the cause of flu. Okay, so... A virus that could then cause a chest infection leading to an acute exacerbation of COPD is, as I've said, the influenza virus, which is the cause of flu. So influenza virus. Right, 
So these pathogens, these bacteria over here, Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenzae, and this virus over here, influenza, they can cause chest infections. And there are two major different types of chest infection that could lead to an acute exacerbation of COPD. Either the infection could be in the large airway, so it could be in the bronchi or the bronchioles and the trachea, so in the airways, the big airways, or it could be in the pulmonary acini, i.e. the distal portions of the tracheobronchial tract, the very small portions, in which case um, we would call it a different type of infection. So there are these two different places, and I'll just get another colour for this. So there are these two different places that this chest infection could be. It could be in the large airway, so in particular in the bronchi and bronchioles, or it could be in the pulmonary acini, i.e. the distal portions of the tracheobronchial tract, so in the pulmonary acini themselves. Now, when you get an infection in these places, it's going to lead to uh, inflammation, and therefore we would call an infection in this place bronchitis, and you could call it acute bronchitis rather than chronic bronchitis, which we know was a result of COPD, because this is an acute uh, added inflammation to the bronchi and the bronchioles. If the inflammation is in the pulmonary acne, then you would instead refer to this as pneumonia. Okay, so there are these two different locations that the infection can be, but both of them can lead to an acute exacerbation of COPD. Normally, if we're dealing with a virus such as influenza virus, this generally causes an infection of the larger airways, so the bronchi and the bronchioles. Whereas if you're talking about pneumonia, an infection down at the distal portions of the tracheobronchial tract, the pulmonary acne, generally that will be caused by a bacterium uh, such as Streptococcus pneumoniae or Haemophilus influenzae. And clearly Streptococcus pneumoniae is named for the reason that it can cause pneumonia. Okay, right. So... If you are unlucky enough then to get one of these chest infections, why does this lead to the symptoms of COPD getting worse? Well, it's because of how the body responds to having a chest infection. And from now on, it doesn't really matter whether we're talking about an infection of the bronchi and bronchioles or the pulmonary acne, because the responses that are going to make the symptoms of COPD worse that the body is going to undertake are going to be the same for both of these different types of chest infections. So it just matters that we've got a chest infection, basically. So the responses then that the body initiates to having a chest infection are, number one, it's going to make more mucus. So I'll put these responses here. So mucus production is going to go up. And we can understand why it's going to do that. The mucus is one of the major ways that the body, uh, well, that the lungs protect themselves from infection. The mucociliary tract is there to grab onto pathogens and then move them out of the tracheobronchial tract. So we can understand why we're upping our level of mucus in response to having a chest infection. But of course, this is going to make the productive cough worse. So there's one of the symptoms of COPD getting worse already, the productive cough. And in addition, it might lead to airways becoming narrower. Okay, so I'll put, um, I'll just put obstruction. Because of course, if you produce more mucus, that's going to have to go somewhere. So it's going to uh, narrow the lumen of the airways and therefore lead to obstruction of airflow. So obstruction is going to get worse and this is going to lead to shortness of breath getting worse. So I'll just put shortness of breath going up and shortness of breath will lead to the dyspnea and the tachypnea getting worse. And of course also obstruction getting worse will lead to the wheeze getting worse as well. In addition, uh, the other thing that happens in response to a chest in infection is that the bronchi and the bronchioles can constrict a process known as bronchoconstriction. I'm just wondering if I've got enough space there to put it up put a dash there, it should all be one word, bronchoconstriction, which means constriction of the bronchi or the bronchioles. Uh, so you can use it to describe not only a bronchus constricting, but a bronchiole constricting. So why is bronchoconstriction uh, a response that you'd want uh, 
in response to a chest infection? Well, the idea is to try and protect your airways. When you've got an infection, you don't want you to breathe in any more gunk that could uh, make the chest infection worse. And by constricting the airways that lead to where the infected site is, uh, then you can try and effectively close off the site to protect it from further damage is the idea here. So what will happen? What does bronchoconstriction actually involve? Going back to our picture of a bronchus or a bronchiole here, we know that we have this bronchial smooth muscle cell layer, and we know that when these muscle cells contract, uh, that will lead to the rings of smooth muscle cells getting smaller circumferences and therefore constriction of the uh, lumen of the tube. So this is what bronchoconstriction is all about, narrowing of the airways by the contraction of the smooth muscle cells. And this will happen to try and protect the damaged airway, uh, to try and make sure that nothing else is going to come into that area and make the situation worse, to sort of seal it off while you deal with the problem and then we'll open it back up once it's um, resolved. Okay, right, so that's why bronchoconstriction is commonly a response to a chest infection. But of course, that's not going to help the symptoms of COPD. So of course, if you're young, healthy and don't have COPD, having a few of your airways constrict a little bit isn't going to produce any dramatic symptoms that will make you go into hospital. But when you're on the edge of a knife, as far as your lung function is concerned, with COPD, bronchoconstriction is now going to lead to severe airflow obstruction and is therefore going to lead to the shortness of breath getting a lot worse, and also, of course, the wheeze getting a lot worse. So there we go. That's how, uh, in response to a chest infection, the symptoms of COPD are going to get so much worse. So that is usually what happens in acute exacerbation of COPD. The person gets a chest infection, and because their lung function is so bad already because of the disease, the response the lungs to that chest infection, namely the increase in the production of mucus and the bronchoconstriction tips their lung function over the edge and makes them extremely short of breath to the point that they end up presenting at hospitals often. Okay, right. So let's just say something about the treatment of an acute exacerbation of COPD and then we'll talk about the treatment of COPD more generally. So up here, what is the treatment for an acute exacerbation of COPD? Well, of course, if we're dealing with a um, bacterial infection, one of the key treatments will be antibiotics. If you're dealing with a viral infection, it will depend on what virus it actually is. Of course, there are, for some viruses, antiviral drugs that can be useful, but uh, they might not necessarily be used in all cases. Okay, but definitely, if you've got a bacterial infection, one of the key uh, components of treatment will be antibiotics. Uh, the other key component of treatment is usually oral corticosteroids. So these are used for their anti-inflammatory effect. So let me give you some examples of oral corticosteroids. So prednisone is obviously an extremely important example, which is a prodrug and will be metabolized to prednisolone, which is the actual active drug. Uh, another example is hydrocortisone. And there are two other examples that I'll put down, dexamethasone and triamcinolone. So another oral glucocorticoid or corticosteroid is dexamethasone. And finally, triam Similone. Okay, right, so all of these are oral medications and uh, they will have an anti inflammatory effect. So they have a way of uh, reducing the body's immune response, basically. Uh, and the idea with these is not to completely turn off the immune response to the chest infection. Of course, there is something very dangerous in your chest you have a very dangerous infection, so you don't want to completely turn off the immune system. The idea with these medications is that it will reduce the severity of the immune response. It will sort of put a little bit of break on the immune response and won't detrimentally um, affect how well you actually clear the chest infection, but will clear some of these symptoms that you're getting because of the body's response to the infection. So it will reduce the amount of mucus you're produce, producing and it will reduce the bronchoconstriction in response to the chest infection by reducing the body's response to that chest infection, but not 
reducing the response so much that you're no longer fighting the chest infection. So that's why they're very useful for reducing the symptoms of an acute exacerbation of COPD. Okay, right, so that's the treatment of an acute exacerbation of COPD. Let's now talk then about the treatment of COPD more generally. But I think actually we'll have a little break here and in the next video we'll do um, treatment of COPD more generally.